Hello again, you sick, twisted weather freaks, and welcome to another season of This Week in Weather. I'm your host and meteorologist, DT from weatherrest.com, the commander of chaos, the colonel of confusion, and the captain of catastrophe, and your resident evil scientist. We'll talk about This Week in Weather, generally across the U.S. and Canada, not just on the East Coast with snowstorms. So this format is going back to the old format a little bit and talking about the overall pattern in general. Uh, in case you're not familiar with the website and who I am, here's the copy of the website, an image so you can see there. Uh, this here is the uh, Twitter page, one of my Twitter pages. And this one here, as you can see, is mostly for my grain concerns. So if you're a grain trader, energy trader, what have you, long range forecaster, you want to use this particular Twitter page. Now, you have another one, which is this one, which uh, is more local and based more on the Facebook page, as you can see. So it's more a focus on uh, the eastern portion of the country, uh, the east coast, hurricane season, that sort of stuff. It doesn't really have a lot of green information in it, snowstorms, what have you. Okay, just wanted to clear that up. All right, we'll start out and take a look at the drought monitor, which is a, a big issue here for the middle portion of the country. And obviously, it's going to be a player as we move into the spring and maybe into the summer. And we can see the drought area is quite pronounced right in here. Uh, some of these areas you can see is, you know, drought three or four. It's uh, quite uh, strong, and you can see this right in here. It's a severe drought in this whole area like this. Now, earlier there was some drought conditions up in here. That's weakened with the big snowstorm they had there. And we had some drought conditions earlier here. That's all gone as well. But we are fairly dry in the southeastern states, and you can see over uh, the southwestern states and then into Kansas, Oklahoma, Colorado, and nor western and northern Texas. Okay. Uh, looking at the last uh, 14 days rainfall precipitation here so uh, we can see that over the last 14 days uh, this you know this green stuff here is a quarter of an inch to about to two inches the dark green is two and a half so but mostly you can see these uh, blobs of yellow and orange here which is two and a half up to four inch rains in Arkansas the Gulf Coast and this is the blizzard they had last week you can see the effect of that but notice Canada is very dry and you can see that with the rainfall anomalies over the past 14 days. So that could be an issue for the folks in Canada. Now, here's our uh, lack of rain. We had a little bit in the Texas Panhandle, but you can see it's still very dry up into uh, portions of the Western Corn Belt up in here. The Eastern Corn Belt's been dry, kind of, but also with some blobs of above normal rain on the Easter, over the eastern third of the country, hit or miss there. And if we take a look at our uh, temperatures, well, I mean, come on. This is April. This is since April 1st. Look at this stuff. Can you believe this? <sighs> this is April. Now, recently it's begun to change a little bit, but good googly freaking moogly. This dark purple stuff in here, that's 15 degrees Fahrenheit below normal. This blue stuff is 6 to 9 degrees below normal. I mean, in Virginia, the Mid-Atlantic region, and New England's been much, much colder, as you can see, and then some not nearly as cold to the south, but this has been a very impressively cold uh, April. And, and by, you know, we... As I stated earlier, we've now set a record for the most postponements in the month of April because of weather conditions in the history of baseball. And if we break this down, this is the last 14 days up in here. You can see this. This is the last 14 days. This is the last seven days. You can see it's still quite cold, uh, but the trend is still very pronounced. Um, so there you go. It's uh, quite impressive, to say the least. I haven't seen April like this in a long time. In fact... Uh, somebody posted this, uh, I saw this here in the Midwest, the Upper Plains through April 18th, the coldest April on record right now. Now we'll see if the month ends up that way, but yes, it has been the coldest, uh, first 18 days of April on record. Okay, let's take a look at our teleconnections, and again, to remind you of what we're talking about with our teleconnections here, this is the map of the different, four different teleconnections we're looking at. So, uh, there is a Pacific side and, uh, the, uh, Atlantic side. So this here is... The Pacific side. So this is the Pacific side here, and this is the Atlantic side here. So in the Pacific, we focus on these two features, the EPO and the PNA. Atlantic, we focus on the uh, Arctic Oscillation and the North American Oscillation. So let's take a look and see what this data is showing. Now here's the uh, uh, Pacific side first. So this is the Eastern Pacific Oscillation, and this is a feature which let me go. I can bring it up to this here. When when it, we're focusing on this feature right here in Alaska. Uh, that's the one we're focusing on right here. This one, and then we're going to focus on this one. 
Now, obviously, with the EPA, the EPO, I should say EPA, the EPO is uh, concerned about uh, whether or not there's a ridge here on the west coast over Alaska or whether there's not. Uh, sometimes you can get a ridge like this. Whoops. So you can see the ridge forming like this, and sometimes the ridge will come underneath it like that. So you'll see that. And the PNA, again, is concerned whether there's a ridge on the west coast or whether there's a trough on the west coast. So just briefly to remind you what we're looking at here. All right, let's go on. We can see here that the Eastern Pacific Oscillation right now is slightly negative. Or, you, know, you can see it briefly goes down into here to, you know, a little negative. Then it goes to neutral uh, as we close out the month into early May. And then it actually drops a little negative again towards the middle of the month. So this indicates some sort of ridging developing over Alaska, potentially, uh, as we move into the beginning of May. Now, the uh, PNA, this is the West Coast Ridge, or whether or not there's a ridge on the West Coast or not. You can see clearly we have a little bit of a ridge here. And then as we move into uh, the end of the month, the beginning of May, we have a deep trough over the West Coast and Eastern Pacific Ocean. And then finally, uh, as we move into the middle of May, there's some projections or hope that we might move into a positive PNA, a ridge on the West Coast. So this could indicate, as you can see here, this would be a ridge over Alaska and then a ridge over the West Coast. So we could end up with a pretty big ridge here as we get into the middle of May and the pattern might turn colder again. Okay, if we look at the Atlantic side, and again, we're looking at um, these two features. Atlantic side here, the NAO and the Arctic Oscillation. We can see that the Arctic Oscillation is strongly positive right now and it's goes drifts down towards neutral by the end of the month and then into the first half of May. You can see that right here. Here it's neutral. It was positive, I should say. Then it goes neutral and then by the time it gets to here. And then the uh, North American oscillation is also strongly positive, which drifts down towards negative or neutral, I should say neutral, by the end of the month, by uh, May 7th, May 8th, May 9th, that sort of thing. All right, let's take a look at the overall pattern. Now, this is a pattern as of uh, April 23rd, Monday. This is either a four-wave pattern or a five-wave pattern. I think it's one in transitions. It's hard to see. You can see clearly see one trough here, another one here, another one here. That's three. And then it's either one something in here or maybe four and five. It might be, like I said, five transition to four. And uh, we can see, you know, strong ridging here over uh, eastern Atlantic into uh Europe where they've had the heat wave or relatively warm temperatures. Another one out here in China, as you can see. So a very active in a pattern overall. And if we look at this in more detail, this is the actual jet stream pattern here for North America. This is our rain system right here. You can see that. We have a bit of a ridge right there. Our polar vortex is up in this area here. And it's, as you can see, it's oriented in a west to east direction. So that means all the cold air is or like this as well. So as a result, we have the Pacific jet coming in, and it's a relatively mild flow, relatively mild pattern. Now, this here is a radar as of 10, 11 o'clock this evening. When I'm doing this video, you can see the rain has moved into the Carolinas. And much of Virginia, it's weakened as it's come east towards Richmond and D.C., but the rain is about to begin finally. And we still have moderate rain in portions of Tennessee, Kentucky, Ohio, Indiana, and portions of Illinois. And if we look at the next five days here, the pattern, we can clearly see what happens. Uh, we have a big trough here over the southeastern states. The Arctic Oscillation, as you can see, very strong, very intense. It's strongly positive. You can see that the NAO is strongly positive. There's nothing here very positive here. Big low pressure over Greenland, that's positive. We have a bit of a ridge here. The EPO is like almost neutral, and the PNA is trying to form. There's our next system coming in from the west coast across the Pacific. So this trough, I have to wait and see what it does, followed by this one in here. And we have some cold air returning to the uh, eastern, I guess the eastern third of the country, eastern half of the country, potentially down the road. If we look at this a little closer, okay, this is North America. We can see again, uh, there's our middle of a ridge here. There's our next Pacific system. There's the southern stream trough. There's a strong, right here you can see the polar vortex is very strong over Baffin Island. So this is a positive NEO and a positive uh, uh, Arctic Oscillation, both of them, as you can see. Okay. If you look at our temperatures, it's still pretty cold the next five days, relative to normal. Not as cold, but relative to normal. No doubt about that. And then um, as we follow the maps here, there's our rain event here for a Tuesday and Wednesday pushes up into New England. A slow-moving rain event, as you can see. And they have high pressure coming in behind it. Not a big deal. High pressure here, high pressure here. 
Um, if this was the middle of January, this is still be rainstorm because it's this low is inland on the coast, as you can see. All right, and then if we look at their actual temperatures, uh, this is now valid on Thursday. Uh, you can see it's quite cold over much of the Midwest and the lower plains relative to normal. That's the look at the white and purple stuff. That's like minus eight, minus nine. You can see it pretty cold in here, but it's a, it's a cold map overall. And it doesn't really change. This is here now by 120 hours. This is Saturday, still below normal temperatures over most of the Midwest and into the Delta area of the Plain States. Now we do see some change here because after the slope blows on through, we can see that the high pressure comes in like this and dominates it. And you can see the relatively cool temperatures right in here. There's the low, which is now going up into this direction. Okay, so that takes us into Sunday this weekend. And beyond that, what happens is, oops, the high moves off the coast, you can see here. Remember, the high was over here. Now it's over here. And as a result, we're getting a southwest wind flow, a front coming in this way, and we're warming up significantly. At least the Midwest is in portions of the plains. Okay, uh, this is the 6 to 10 day, and you can see uh, we have our ridge on the west coast very nicely here, but we also have a trough here. So here's the trough, and there's the ridge. You can see like this. And they have a nice big gigantic polar vortex here. So the Arctic Oscillation is positive, the NAO is positive, and you can see flow. Now a bit of a ridge forming here, but you can see this is coming down, I should say. Let me clear it out. I have too many lines here. Okay, this is coming down from Canada, bringing some cold air southward, not quite into the US. And we have our trough here, and we're getting a ridge here. So it's going like this. This means any energy coming in from the Pacific gets ejected in this direction into the central plains in the upper midwest and that would be precipitation now this is the hemispheric shot and again you can see these features here the arctic oscillation is still strongly positive you can see it very large one right in this area here with one vortex center here another vortex center here now if we look at this individually during the six to ten day at the day eight, we can see the trough coming in. This trough develops into, you can see here. And what happens is we have a nice, very nice big ridge here. Okay, the, with a trough in this direction, another ridge here. So we have the colder coming southward and we have a southwest wind bringing up moisture ahead of the system. And this could be a significant cold front and potentially a severe weather threat on May 1st, 2nd or 3rd for the plains of the Midwest. So that's something to watch out for. Indeed, if we take a look at the uh, high level winds, excuse me, the 850 millibar winds, not that high, only a mile above the ground. This is for April 30th. Look at the strong jet streak right here. 50, 60 knots, and here it is at 186 hours, uh, April 30th into May 1st. Again, very strong jet streak for 850, only one, only one mile above the ground. So that's potentially significant. We'll see. Maybe it won't, but I think it will. And then if we look at our temperatures as, again, because we have this ridge developing here, you see the, the, the warming pattern here, this ridge right in this area here. Actually, let me um, clear it out here. The ridge is actually there. So because we have that, we can see the temperatures begin to warm up here. You can see these strong positive temperature anomalies on uh, Maple 29th into the 30th, which moves to the East Coast uh, by 1st and 2nd. But notice the, ble the, the next shot of cold air coming in this direction here, coming down from the Western Canada. And it does that because of the ridge here moving inland from, the, from Alaska. So there, there's our flow coming southward, and that develops the next cold shot behind the front and this upper trough. Okay, we can see the 6 to 10 day. The GFS model for midday has turned pretty wet over the plains in the Midwest, and that's also the case for the European model to some degree. This is the uh, a six to ten day European. It's not quite as wet as the GFS, but it is getting wetter. And if we look at the, the 11 to 15 day, well, lots to see here. This here's the hemispheric shot. So we have a ridge here from Siberia pushing inland. We have one here in Alaska. So definitely the EPO now is gone, uh, back to being negative again. You can clearly see that right in here and we have a nice flow of cold air southward so that's good there's our southern jet stream our trough is over here in central russia and another one here so it looks like a two-wave pattern maybe a three-wave maybe it's something another trough there so that'd be interesting to see and then like i said the scandinavia ridge maybe that might push towards greenland and send the pattern back being negative again the uh, nao
I don't think it will, but it might. That's something to watch out for. And uh, this here is the overall 11 to 15 day pattern. Uh, looking at North America, there's our polar vortex. Again, the positive NAO, positive Arctic oscillation. You can see all this configuration here. Here's our ridge, and there's our flow bringing the cold air southward again. So, yes, definitely looks like by uh, May 8th, the solar starts turning colder again. And if we look at the um, rainfall, we can see that the models are much wetter, 11 to 15 day, on the CFS, the European, and the GFS. They're all pretty wet here. Uh, going into the first week of May and even beyond in the middle of May. Now, the problem is this time of year, if you have overcast skies and rain, you have pretty cool temperatures. So there you go. Now, for the East Coast, a lot of this rain doesn't get in. Uh, it's mostly a Midwest type of pattern from what I'm seeing here, where they get some residual rain to the East Coast, but not a lot. Finally, let me remind you that uh, this week in weather, you know, if you want to hit the tip jar, there's the link right here. If you want to use it, you can. Um, now, there's no clickbait on here. I don't get paid for this at all. So this is just something I love doing. I love teaching. And I'll continue to do this every Sunday or Monday, depending on my work schedule, through the summer, through the hurricane season, into the fall before we hit winter once again. This is meteorologist DT from weathers.com. I'll talk to you soon.